Before we jump into today's show, I just wanted to let you know that I have got a brand new three-part audio series available to download right now. If you head over to donnaedecom forward slash three-part audio, that's all one word, no spaces, you can download your How to Build Your Authority with Podcasting audio series. This is going to address guesting and hosting, so if you're interested in either of those and you want to know how to build your authority, head over to donnaedecom forward slash three part audio. The link will be in the show notes. You're listening to the Mindset and Action podcast, the place to be to grow and streamline your business. I'm your host, Donna Eve. Let's jump into the show. Building smart processes to streamline the workflow can make the work easier and the results more reliable, which keeps my head above water and my clients happy. Mark Mason. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I'm so glad to have you here today. And with me is Bryony Jackson. Welcome to the podcast, Bryony. How are you today? I'm really good, thank you. And thank you so much for having me here. It's very exciting. I am really excited to have this conversation and the reason this podcast episode has come about is because me and Bryony are in a group together and I just happened to see her do a post where she said something along the lines of yeah well anything that streamlines is good for me or something like that and I was just like she looks she likes to talk about streamlining let's get her on the show. (laughs) <laughs> so it's all, I'm all about like, streamlining <laughs> yeah all about streamlining and that's one of the pillars of this podcast is it's the tagline grow and streamline your business so um I am here for anybody who can give us tips on how we can streamline um so Bryony why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do before we jump in of course so I'm Bryony and I run a company called Bryony makes marketing easy And I do just that for busy small business owners who are looking to achieve their first six-figure year. Brilliant. I love that. Nice and simple. So what made you get into the marketing realm and particularly wanting to make it easy for people? So I've had a 25-year career in marketing in the pharmaceutical industry. And if anyone can overcomplicate anything, the pharmaceutical industry will. <laughs> and I kind of fell into it. I didn't ever plan to be a marketer. I just happened to be within this pharmaceutical company doing something else. And someone asked me to join marketing. Um, and so I've never really felt like a marketer. I also have a memory like a sieve and I can't remember fancy jargon and I can't remember fancy processes. So I kind of feel like I've winged it for 25 years. But that said is I have had a very successful career and I have worked at a really senior level. Then add into that, I have a lot of friends who have small businesses and so many of them have come to me and said, oh, my business could be so much more successful if only I knew how to do marketing. And I thought, what? But you do know how to do marketing. It's actually really simple. And that's what kind of led me to this path that I wanted to make marketing easy for small business owners, because I'm really passionate about creating success for all. Um, And I'm actually really passionate about getting people out of the corporate world and into running their own businesses so that they can be their own bosses. Mm. And yeah, one of the reasons that I'm passionate about that is that I have suffered from workplace stress and I've also suffered from workplace bullying at quite a senior level in the corporate world I know I made a promise to myself actually in January in January I was made redundant which followed a period of workplace bullying from a really senior person and I promised myself that I would never put myself in the position again where someone could make me feel physically ill because of their actions. Mm. And I also promised myself that I wouldn't put myself in the position again where somebody could just take away my livelihood at the drop of a hat because they've decided to make me redundant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You are speaking my language. And I'm I'm very lucky in the fact that I didn't suffer with any workplace bullying. Um, but I did have in a previous role a colleague who was just so disruptive to everybody in yes. the place. And I suffer with anxiety. And yeah. he used to sit opposite me and he'd be on the phone all the time. He'd be so loud. We were in such a tiny office and there was only four desks in there. And me and the other person that worked there regularly, and even the lady who only worked um, in the office sometimes, we just 
we couldn't get our work done because he was just so loud and so obnoxious. And then there was just lots of other things that added to this guy just being just like almost just totally socially inept understanding and being self-aware that it yeah. got to the point where my anxiety got to a level where I went to my doctor and I was like, I can't go into work. I just can't be around this person. And I got signed off work for three weeks. Wow. I know. And then and my just... boss said to me, if you need to work from home, Donna, feel free to work from home, you know, if it gets too much. I was like, why am I the one that's being kind of pushed out yeah. of the office when I'm not the only one that's got a problem with him and he's mm. the one that's disrupting? Like, he doesn't need to be in the office, really. For what I mean, he was out a lot on the road anyway, but when he was there, he didn't really need to be there. And it just really frustrated me that I felt like, not that I was being punished because actually, you know, here I am working from home, love loving my life, being self-employed. Um, I'm happier at home, but it did feel more like, you know, I, I was I was the one suffering. And so therefore I was the one being pushed out. Yeah. I think in the corporate world, there's just a real lack of care for people mm. and a real lack of um, consequence of actions but I, I'm very lucky in that I've worked from home for years because I live in Devon and all my work's in London um, but even when you work from home you can still be bullied and you can still get stressed unfortunately yes absolutely and I'm currently freelancing still in the corporate world in pharmaceutical marketing because my business is relatively young so yeah. I need to pay the bills of course um and I'm still in a position again where I had an absolutely awful day yesterday because of one person's actions. I ended up in tears. I ended up feeling physically sick. And I just thought my business cannot grow fast enough because yeah. I need to get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's something that a lot of people can can relate to if they've been in the corporate world. It's just yeah. sometimes, you know, there are some really nice bosses out there and some really good companies, but uh, few and far between unfortunately yeah absolutely oh, so let's get on to to the, the the good stuff let's get on to the yes. good stuff because that's that's enough of the sad stuff we're, we're moving <laughs> away from that so we did do you know where your focus goes we're growing our business and things like that so let's yep. talk about the business side of things yeah. so today we're going to particularly talk about streamlining your social media which I think is something that people feel very overwhelmed with a lot of yes. the times but I did want to make it clear to people that social media isn't your only avenue of marketing so that's right. do you want to just cover a little bit of what marketing encompasses just so that yes. it might spark some things that go oh I didn't even realize that that was marketing and I do that so I'm a better at marketing than I thought I yeah. was. yeah <laughs> well as you know I'm all about streamlining things I have a very succinct way of putting it because often people are ask will say to me oh, I'm not quite sure of the difference between marketing and selling mm. so the way that I put it is that marketing encourages and sales convert so therefore, anything that you do to encourage someone to be a part of your business is marketing. And all marketing really is, is just communication. It's absolutely nothing to sweat about. And we all communicate every day. So we all know we can do it. Yeah. But we need to think about nonverbal communication as well as verbal communication. So your nonverbal communication will be things about how your brand looks, what your logo looks like, what your shop front, whether that's digital or physical shop front what that looks like because that all communicates a message even the font that you use the colors that you use they all communicate a message um and then in terms of the actual physical marketing it encompasses so many things I mean obviously there's your obvious things that you like your emails and your adverts and your social media and your website and your written leave pieces or written leaflets or whatever you have but then I actually think that anything you do within your business is marketing. So, for instance, your customer service policy conveys a message to your customer about the sort of business that you are. So that's mm -hmm. marketing. It's anything that encourages people to be a part of your journey. Love that. that love that. That's a really good way of looking at it as well. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about our social media, like I say, I think people feel really overwhelmed with it. And, you know, they've got to be on all the platforms. You know, I keep seeing people talk about TikTok now. And it's so funny how it's almost like the, the older generation moves to the newer platforms and then all the kids find somewhere new to go. And it's like it's now not cool anymore. <laughs> Facebook used to be cool. Yeah. Back in 20, 2007 when I started. <laughs> 
on it. It was cool. But yeah, I think it is. And I see so many people now talking about TikTok and I really do not like TikTok as a platform, as a company. Like I just, I'm not a yeah. fan. So, um, well, here's a shocker for you. As, as a as a seasoned marketeer, I have never been on TikTok. Love that. Love that. And I don't really intend to. <laughs> so where do we where do we start with like if we want to kind of overhaul our social media and streamline yeah. it, where are we starting when it comes to platforms? So my top insider tip for you is that you don't need to be everywhere on social media. <gasps> Two platforms are enough. Really? And that's a game changer. That it is a game changer. Yeah. And the, the reason being is as a small business owner who's juggling their business with running a family or having a freelance role in the corporate world or whatever it is you're juggling with, you just can't be everywhere and you will burn yourself out trying to be everywhere. But the second thing to consider is, is you only need to be where your ideal client hangs out. And if your ideal client isn't on TikTok, you don't need to be there. If your ideal client is on TikTok, then you definitely do need to be there. So you just need to work out which are the two best platforms where your ideal client are going to be and just focus all your efforts on those two platforms. I love that because that's what I tend to do. And I feel I'm a little bit spread at the moment because I'm trying to get my Facebook community off the ground, um, but I'm not really a fan of Facebook um, just because personally, like I like to yeah. use Instagram. That's where I like to hang out because it's pictures and that's what I like. But I also well, love LinkedIn because I feel it's more, it's more where my clients are. It's more yeah. professional. It's less, oh my God, my kids are doing my head in like all of that tap you see on Facebook where it's everybody's yeah. airing their dirty laundry which I don't want to see really so it's a nicer place for me to hang out and I feel yeah. it's more aimed at business and professional sort of words and then Facebook is just like oh I'm just kind of it just feels like a mess to me <laughs> yeah well that's actually another really good point because although you want to be where your ideal client hangs out it could be that they hang out on three or four platforms but you still can whittle it down to four, but you need to make, sorry, whittle it down to two, but you, you need to make sure that they are the platforms that you're comfortable using as well. Yeah. So I am a Facebook girl. I actually like Facebook. Um, I also use Instagram, but I'm not very comfortable with Instagram. So I don't do as much on it. And they're the mm. two platforms where my ideal client is. I do a little bit on LinkedIn, but that's only because I had a really big following of people on LinkedIn from my pharmaceutical group school career yeah and I kind of figured out that they might share my posts and get it in front of a small business owner but I don't get a lot of traction for it I don't do that much on it and I'd much rather focus my efforts on Facebook yeah yeah and but I yeah. feel like for me Facebook groups is what I love I love being in the groups like I when I go on Facebook that's where I am I'm in groups so yeah I feel like I can get I get around it like my two platforms are Instagram and LinkedIn but I do Facebook groups as well <laughs> yes. I love my Facebook my group. <laughs> brilliant so when we're looking at streamlining the process of our social media what are three things that you can tell us um to do that is going to help us with that streamlining yeah so the first one I've already touched on is you need to know who your ideal client is and where they hang out mm. so once you know who your ideal client is and you understand them and very often it does become a version of you you'll understand how to talk to them how often they want to hear from you on social media and where they are so that's a massive streamline already because it might be that your ideal client is like me and extremely busy. And whilst I like a little bit of social media, I can't keep up with multiple posts a day. Mm. So if I'm in a group that's just like posting 10 times a day, I soon come out of it. But if I'm in a group that's maybe once a day or once every day, I'm there and I'm happy and I'm engaged. My second tip is be consistent and not constant. So you don't have to, and this is kind of ties into the point I've just made, you don't have to be hosting every day, five times a day. You just need to be consistent with what you do. So if you always post on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday and your people in your group or your Instagram page know when to expect you to come in, you're going to get better engagement. And my third big tip streamlining is repurposing. So my little motto is create once, push everywhere. 
Mm. So you create one piece of long form content. So that could be a blog or a podcast. And then you repurpose that for all your short form content. So you can take sound bites. You can make little posts out of quotes. Um, you can create videos from some of the words that you have in your blog. And so you can have one piece of long form content in a month and then repurpose it into all your short form content throughout the whole month. And then that's your whole thing done for a month. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And that's something that I talk about a lot is that yeah. repurposing. And something that I have heard from a some guru on Instagram somewhere, I can't remember who it was now, so I can't quote them, unfortunately, <laughs> but I thought it was bloody genius and yeah. he said go back 90 days on your Instagram and look at where what your most popular posts were absolutely and yeah. repost them I was like yeah. oh, what and yeah. we forget we forget we've already met like literally if you've been in business for a year or more you have already got all the content you need for the for the rest of your days, really, because yes, that's nobody right. is seeing a post that you did on Instagram a year ago. Nobody's seeing it. So if it did really well, repurpose it. Yeah. And the algorithms mean that not everyone sees every post anyway. Exactly. I mean, my um, Facebook group has been going for two months and I'm already repurposing stuff. Because at the beginning, I was posting to like nobody or one person. And now I've got 70 people in my group. I can repurpose all that stuff. And it's great because I have weeks where I don't have to produce any content. Yeah. Which I love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I really do think that that is, is a trick that we are missing out on there is like that yeah. repurposing. And I don't know, I feel like maybe people feel like, oh, well, I, I'm not really doing the work if I'm doing that. But it's just mm. it's just that streamlining, which is what we're talking about. And just being smart with your time, like you put yes. all the time and effort into that post. And if it did well, I mean, I'm not telling you to go back and just start reposting every single post, because if it didn't do well, what's the point? But yeah. if it did well, then why not repurpose it? Because people yeah. who are following you now, just like within your group, Bryony, they weren't it, they weren't following you a year ago right. or they might not have been taking much notice or they might not have been engaging and now they feel they're ready to engage exactly but I think we also and I'm including myself in this I think we also overestimate people's retention and attention span on social yeah. media and we overestimate how many people see our posts because we think in our groups that every single person sees our posts and if unless you put at everyone they're probably not mm. And even if you do, I've got mine switched off, so I don't get notified of that. <laughs> <laughs> I have massive FOMO, so I like have my everyone switched on for everyone, just in case <laughs> I miss something exciting. <laughs> See, horses for courses, isn't it? I know. No, knowing your ICA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. So, what would you say to listeners out there who feel like they are shouting? so loud and this is kind of how I feel a lot of the time is like yeah. I'm shouting I'm putting out really great content I'm putting it out there and it's just like it feels like I'm just getting lost in the noise of everybody yeah. else and I'm like get to the point where I think like what's the point of even bothering to post because I might get four likes I get no comments nobody engages and if they do engage it's my friends in business that I know <laughs> <laughs> like not going to work with me well, because they don't want to any, any engagement is great because people engaging with your posts even if they're not the right people might be getting it in front of the right people but my first point I would say is persevere because it will come and I'm I'm at that young business stage where it's really hard you're, you haven't got an engaged audience and you feel like you're shouting into the void but you just have to keep plugging away because one day it will happen everybody you see on social media who's really successful were at this point one time in their lives mm. um I'd also say have a really clear objective about what you want to achieve and track your metrics because it's very easy to sit here thinking I've achieved nothing this week nothing good's happened but when you look at your metrics you realize that actually something has happened so for me, I'm looking at my board in front of me because I have all my metrics on my board, which I track every week and I have my goals as well. So my goal by the end of this year is to have an email subscriber list of 500 and a Facebook group of 800. So I know that I need to get 15 email subscribers 
a week until the end of the year. And I need to get 26 people into my Facebook group each week until the end of the year. And I know that this week I'm not achieving it on my Facebook group. I've only had five. And I know that on my email list, I'm short of about four. And then I also have a metric for downloads of my free guide. And I know that I'm smashing that. I need 15 and I've got 13 already. And I just need a couple more by Saturday. So mm. so for me, that's a massive brilliant because I know that those people who are downloading my free guide will eventually go onto my email list. So I will hit that target at that, that point if I keep on tracking that. What else am I tracking? I'm tracking sales. I only sell one thing. I've launched it way too early. I don't have an engaged audience, but I just thought it'd be... <laughs> a really good practice for me yeah and I've actually sold one and it Brilliant. was the sweetest, sweetest sale I've ever had because I was camping in deepest darkest Devon with no phone signal and I sold a thing and I that's, couldn't be more happy yeah that's magic isn't it that is the magic yeah. of it I had the same thing at the weekend a client that I'd invoiced last week um and you never know if somebody's gonna pay an invoice or not they've still got a chance to back out and I just yeah. got ping on my phone on Saturday saying invoice been paid and I was like yeah, and I've just great. been here watching telly how freaking yeah. fantastic <laughs> <laughs> and the other sort of metrics that I'm tracking for my own sanity and to, to keep me on this trajectory that I want to be on. And so I'm tracking number of positive testimonials. So I have said I need 10 by April next year. Um, I've set myself a financial target for next year. I'm yet to create my my offer that's going to achieve that. So I know when I've got to create it by because it ties in with when I've got to achieve that financial target. Um, that's probably about all the metrics I'm tracking at the moment, but I have my little, sp- I love a spreadsheet. Me too. Even in my home life, I love a spreadsheet. So I have a spreadsheet for all my metrics and across the top month by month, I list all the activities that I've done so I can check which activities are launching and which aren't. So for instance, this podcast will go into my activities list and I can see whether podcasting, guest speaking on other people's podcasts has an effect on the number of followers that I get. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's so important. It's one of those things that people don't do. I think it's just one of those things that like, I haven't got time to do that. But Mm. honestly, it can take five minutes. I literally make it part of my CEO and I do mine monthly and probably weekly would be better because if I'm not on track, it can help me boost myself a little bit. But I do monthly do a deep dive. So I track everything on Instagram so I'm like how many posts did I put out how many reels did I put out how many stories went out so I can see month on month what I'm doing and how that's affecting my engagement so I do a deep dive but just tracking sort of the top layer numbers like you've said there on a weekly basis I think would be really good for um, keeping that because I do keep track of my email list but I don't really I think my issue is I track it but I don't then implement actions on the results of that tracking. That was going to be the thing I was just about to say is you really have to react to what those metrics are telling you. Mm. So if you're doing activities that are working really well and moving you towards your goal, dial them up. And if you've got other activities that aren't moving you towards your goal, dial them down because there's no point spending time. We don't have enough spare time to spend on activities that aren't achieving our goals. Absolutely, absolutely. Which is why I find it very difficult with Instagram because I feel like... I really want Instagram to work because I mm. just like the platform. And yeah. you know, I was a photographer, so you won't know that, but I used to be a photographer. So it yeah. was my happy place when I was a <laughs> wedding photographer and whatnot. And so I just kind of fell in love with the platform and I've been on it ever since. And I see some people just doing some amazing things on there. And I'm just like, why can't I crack this Instagram code? And I did a podcast episode a little while back saying that I was going to give up Instagram because it just wasn't growing for me. Like (laughs) I was on a networking meeting this week and I said to the ladies that I was in a room with, I said, you know what? I said, I find Instagram so difficult to grow. I said, I've been hovering around the 1500 mark for the last, I don't even know how long. I haven't got my sheet up there anymore because it's last year's <laughs> sheet. So, oh, no, it's just here. Hold on. I've got my sheet, ladies and gentlemen. I have been hovering around it since probably March time. 
March around 1500 and I would lose a couple, gain a couple, lose a couple. And I'm, and when you actually look at the stats, I'm actually gaining more than a couple, but I'm also losing more than a couple. Yeah. So it's only changing my numbers by a couple each time. And I, I, I got to 1500 and I put up a story and went, yeah, it to 1500. I said, you watch now somebody unfollow me and two people unfollowed me within about an hour of me doing that and it's just hovered there yeah and these ladies went oh let me go and they all three went and um followed me which was really sweet of them so I was then at 1501 but then I watched my friend who is a social media expert on Instagram she uh told us about this uh it's not a new feature particularly but this area on Instagram where you can go and look at your following and it will have earmarked accounts that are spam accounts, bot accounts or scammy accounts for you to unfollow. And I had 20 in there. So I got rid of those and I was back to 1481. I was like, oh my Well, if it makes you feel any better, Donna, my Instagram following is 43. Um, I actually did paid someone to put an advert on their Instagram account last week, which doubled my figures. So last week I was at 21 or something and now I'm at 43. So it makes you feel any better. But then I know. No, it doesn't because I've had my account for four years. (laughs) But I feel like Instagram's a lot more fickle than Facebook. I feel like people are more loyal on in Facebook groups anyway. I think I think you might be right. I think yeah. you might be right. So yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to focus on my group and on LinkedIn more. And I'm trying to leave Instagram alone a bit more, but it just, I don't know, it works for me. Like I mm. I repurpose my Instagram posts to my LinkedIn, not the other way around, because I like Instagram. So it's kind yes. of it's kind of where I start on my social media journey. But that's just that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> So we were talking about if you're not seeing any return, weren't we? So yes. perseverance, clear objective and track your metrics. And the third thing was engage your audience. Even if they're not engaging with you, try and engage with them. And that's another thing that's in my free guide is I tell you about types of posts that will captivate your audience. And I was feeling very generous on the day I created it. So it also has 30 content ideas so you can supercharge your social media this month. Fabulous. So tell us where we can grab that download. So if you head to my Facebook group, which is the Easy Peasy Marketing Group. Yeah. And then click on the cover photo. photo, There is a link in there that you can just download my guide. Brilliant. I will link that in the show notes for you guys Brilliant. to go Thank over. You. And don't forget to also join the group. Don't just take the freebie and run. No. Um, <laughs> because I, I can know also... Brian, you'll have a lot of really good information <laughs> in the group as well. So <laughs> Yeah. But I can also give you the link directly to the to the um free guide as well. Because I'm I'm really proud of my free guide. It's it's not your average free guide where it just skims the surface of everything. It's packed with value. I've had really good feedback on it. People have said it's been a game changer. So I really want to get it out there to people. So if you want to link directly to that, that's fine with me. Brilliant. I will put all the links in the show notes for you guys. So please do go and check those out. Now, before we wrap up, I love to do what I call my quick fire round, which is uh, it's four questions. And sometimes I only send people three. So I'll throw in it in the uh, the extra one at the top here uh, for you. So what is your favorite podcast to listen to? So I'm not actually a big podcast listener to, but I have just recently got into them along with audiobooks because I've realized I can learn whilst doing housework, which I love. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so I'm, of course, I'm going to say yours because that's the one I've listened to most recently. Fabulous. And then there's another one. And this is where my menopausal brain comes in because I can't remember the name of the lady. Um, But it was all about marketing and it was just really interesting to hear about it from someone else's perspective. Mm, Yeah. Uh, For a marketing, I very much um, advocate. And if you're on my email list, you'll know this because I actually share with my email list the podcast that I'm listening to. And this is one that's always been in there. It used to be called the Not For Lazy Marketers podcast. It's now called Embodied Marketing. Um, and that's with Emily Hirsch. And she is fantastic if you want to podcast. I'll definitely be having a listen to, so, to that. Yeah. Yeah, do have a listen. Um, so that's brilliant. What is the book that's made the biggest impact on your life thus far? 
So the book is called The Ragged Trousered Philanthropist by Robert Trassel. So it's quite an old one. Oh, wow. Um, And it's all about before unions were ever set up, how badly workers were treated, but they kind of created the mess themselves by trying to undercut each other. And the reason that I love this book and actually think it should be taught in schools as well is because it teaches or taught me three things. First one was about really acting with integrity and honesty in the workplace, not viewing competition as as bad thing and actually working together and collaborating with your competitors and creating success for all. Mm, I love that. I love that. I've not heard of that one. So I am going to link to it as I always do, guys. My guest bookshelf is linked in the show notes. And if you click through that guest bookshelf, it will take you through. And my most recent guest is always at the top. So it kind of goes in order. So you can go back through and just see all of the books that have been recommended by my guests. And I try my best to remember to put in who recommended it and what episode they are in. So if you go back and you you go into that bookshelf and you find a book that you like and you think, oh, who recommended that? You can go back and listen to the podcast episode if you missed it. So a um, really good resource there of brilliant books uh, recommended by business owners just like you um, that can really help you within your business. And there's a few outliers in there as well. We've got the uh, collection of Tintin and Anne of Green Gables in there, which I absolutely love. So um, yeah, do go through and check that out. So that'll be in my guest bookshelf. Um, And then what's your go-to snack when you're in a hurry, Bryony? Absolutely. Toast, peanut butter and banana. Oh my god! Do you know what? I love it when people say peanut butter, and then you just said peanut butter and banana. Now I don't have it on toast; I have it on rice cakes. But that is my lunch every day. I love it. We also have um, banana and peanut butter on my porridge in the mornings. Mm-hmm. I eat a lot oh, of peanut is, butter. Yeah, me too. Me too. I buy it in the big kilo tubs of the whole earth. Kilo yes, tub. so do I. <laughs> the only way to buy it it is indeed indeed um and then finally what's your ultimate me time thing to do so this question worried me because I had to really think about it which led me to believe that actually I don't give myself much me time but I think probably yeah I know I think probably at the moment having a bath and listening to an audio book whilst in the bath Mm. because I'm relaxing whilst learning (laughs) I think for me, the reason I ask it is because I want people to stop and think. And then because sometimes we just get into the routine of doing things and we don't even realize that the things that we do are that kind of, you know, make that effort to make it a little bit more, you know, actual me time. So, you know, a bath is lovely, but what could you do to just elevate that and make it a little bit more me time? And I mean, you live in Devon, which is a beautiful part of the country. So um, I, you know, walk on the beach walk in the forest you know there's so many beautiful places um, yeah I mean I, I I walk every day I don't know if you just heard my two dogs kicking off because yeah. somebody dared to walk past the door <laughs> um, but yeah I have two dogs so I walk every day I was out at five o'clock this morning in the fields in beautiful sunrise yeah um so I do that but I don't really class it as me time because I'm concentrating on the dogs and there's us- they're usually going in opposite directions. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just that, like anything where we can, uh, to me, me time is a lot about just taking that moment to stop and absorb what's happening so even if yes. on that dog walk you can take that moment like just what you've just said there is to in the moment take that time to just go look how beautiful this is look at my doggos you know look yeah. at look at where I am and just really appreciate it that's enough to give you those endorphins and that little hit that's of right. you know what gratitude in the morning so I just I think that's lovely and it's one of the reasons I would like a dog but my cat wouldn't like it so uh, <laughs> I have to wait until she's no longer on this mortal oh. world before I look at getting a dog um but yeah, brilliant. I love that. Thank you so much for your time today, Bryony. That's been a fantastic um, little trip through streamlining your social media processes with some great golden nuggets in there about metrics and things like that. So I'm really, it's been really a pleasure. Episode. Um, where can people find you before we end out? So I am on Facebook, the Easy Peasy Marketing Group. Um, I'm also on Instagram as Bryony Makes Marketing Easy. And don't bother finding me on LinkedIn because I don't she go in there like very often. Out over there. <laughs> <laughs> 
I will link those in the show notes, guys. So make sure you go over it and connect, get that freebie. Um, it sounds amazing. I'm going to be downloading it um, and I will see you next week. Bye for now. Don't forget to hit those stars and leave a review of the podcast where you listen if you found value in what you heard today. It's a free way you can help the podcast reach more people just like you.